In the previous video, we saw that the Shannon entropy measures the variability of the elements within a distribution in bits, that is, the number of yes-no questions needed to identify an element. The more variability, the more questions are needed. That gives us the link to information theory. Now explore the link to combinatorics, to permutations. This link is less strong because it is only an approximation that works with large sets. As before, we have a set of elements with unknown distributions. We still play 20 questions, but this time I'm not going to pick a particular element. I will pick the whole set in a particular order. I will pick a sequence. Note that the set and the distributions do not have any order. Also note that the elements can be told apart only up to the properties selected. So in the example we cannot tell the triangles apart. The problem is, how many questions do you need to identify the particular sequence? So here we go, third and last derivation. Let's first count the number of permutations w. This is given by the multinomial coefficient. n factorial, the number of permutation of n distinguishable elements, divided by n1 factorial, the number of indistinguishable permutation within the first group, divided also by n2 factorial, the indistinguishable permutation within the second group, and so on. So we have n factorial over the product of ni factorial. Now the distribution tells us nothing about which permutation we are going to choose, so by symmetry all cases are the same. We saw that in this case the minimum number of question is given by the log of the cases. So log w is the number of bits to identify a permutation, or if you prefer, the variability of the permutations. Since w will increase with the number of elements, we can divide by n and have the average number of bits per element. We take 1 over n log w and substitute w. The ratio in the log becomes the difference between the logs. Now we want to see what happens when n is large. In that case, we can use the following approximation. Natural log of n factorial is about n natural log of n minus n. Note the expression is only valid for the natural log, so let's call the basis b of the log and change to natural log. Also, the product within the log becomes the sum of the log. Now we can apply the approximation. ln factorial becomes n ln minus n, and minus sum of ln ni factorial becomes minus sum ni ln ni plus sum of ni. Minus n and sum of ni simplifies, and we write this n as the sum of ni. Collect the minus the sum of ni. The difference of the log becomes the ratio, and ni over n is equal to pi. So 1 over n log w for large n is approximately minus p log p, the Shannon entropy. A couple of things to note. The relationship is an approximation, not an equality. So you can't always think of the Shannon entropy as the log of permutation per element. It doesn't always work. Second, note the factor of 1 over n between log w and minus p log p. This will play a key role in the difference between the Boltzmann entropy and the Gibbs entropy. So far we have seen that the Shannon entropy minus p log p is the only continuous monotonic and linear indicator of variability of the elements within a distribution, how different the elements are from each other. It quantifies the number of questions one needs on average to identify an elements within the distribution. It also approximately quantifies the number of bits per element needed to identify the permutation of a large sequence with a known distribution.